Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. Today is Whatever Wednesday, and that means it's time for fantasy, or science fiction, or whatever else comes to mind, not cartoon related. That is a topic I save for Cartoon Saturdays here on my channel. So let's get started, shall we? Before we do, please don't forget to like, sub, and share all my videos with all your gorgeous friends out there if you haven't already. That would really help my channel grow and it would really mean a lot to me if you do. So thank you for taking a moment to support little artists and their efforts to make their big dreams come true. Okay, so centaurs. Half man, half horse. Well, I bet you can guess which half goes on top, right? I mean, it would be silly if it was the top half was a horse and the bottom half was a human, right? I mean... Think of the laws of physics that would violate. The muscles would never support the top half of a horse on the weak legs of a human. So, yeah. Okay, so, centaurs. Greek? Roman? Where are they from? The myth, that is. I mean, not the real ones that C.S. Lewis chronicled in his writings, as he wrote of his heralding tales through Narnia. <laughs> okay, just kidding. I know what's fake, like what's made up, like taxes and speed limits, and what's real, but let's move on. Centaur first originated with the Greeks, with the obscure word kentaros. The centaur were usually said to have been born to Ixion and Nepheli. Sorry if I mispronounced those Greek words, but I didn't learn Greek in school in an attempt to reveal some dark secret of lust. And then the centaurs were born. In, the, in other versions, they were the children of a man named Centaurus, who was a son of the aforementioned couple, or the heir of Apollo and a nymph named Stibble. Still, other centaurs were said to have been fathered by Zeus. And these centaur were supposedly horned, like rams or cows, maybe. Well, the centaur have a rich history in their own right, being most famous for the battle with the Lapith, who had been the cousins to the centaurs. Wow, some family feud, am I right? Of course, the battle happened because the centaur tried to carry off all the Lapith women on the day of the big wedding ceremony between Hippodamia and Pyrethaeus. Now, I think it's safe to say that my family are all angels compared to these family gatherings. Who else can share? Well, the Centauro Maki, or Centauro Machi, is most famously portrayed in the Parthenon by Phidias and in the Renaissance era sculpture by Michelangelo. Now, you may be wondering, but Logan... Where or how did people first come up with a myth of such a creature? And I'm here to tell you that many a scholar believe that the centaur came from the earliest reactions between two cultures. Possibly. One of them are most likely ones that rode horses and the other one didn't. Easily explained, right? Well, history tells us of such encounters like the Minoan Aegean world or when the Aztecs encounter the Spanish horsemen. Many of these clashes must have led to the non-horse cultures to build stories of half-human horse demons that would rain terror through the mists and the dark. Now, I've said this before, ancient humans were some amazing storytellers, probably because they didn't have cell phones and Candy Crush yet. But this may be interesting, this may not be interesting to you, but did you know that a female centaur were called centaurides, or centauresses, and mostly appeared in late antiquity. Other cultures also had centaur-like creatures, such as in India, Russia, from times as far back as 2600 BC to the 18th century AD. Yes, indeed. Throughout history, in fact, we are regaled with all manner of centaurian type epic tales. They have just served all kinds of purposes 
from in, even in medieval literature where they were heavily used in heraldry and well pretty much any other areas but they were they were as with most roman and greek iconic character types used often to tell morals or instill fear of dark places or encouraged valor and many other virtues to the learning ear of who would hear the epic ballads from the sage old scholars and teachers who were there to teach them whatever lessons the day held in store, much like Aesop's fables in later years. Now, before I leave, I'd like to mention a few t-shirt designs available here on my shop. That's right. I have the Dunkleosteus available as a print on a number of t-shirts. If you like that video shown here, please go pick it up and help support my channel. And also, check out the other images on Redbubble available for purchase. Okay, one more quick announcement. I have a new book release, and I'll be introducing that in just a few weeks. Everyone likes coloring books, right? Well, cool. Because... That's what my new book is. That's all I can say right now, but please stay tuned for that. It's almost time for that, so it's coming soon. And that is all the time I have for right now. As always, I'm your artist Logan. I'm kind of sketchy, and I'll catch you later.